Welcome back hunters to another tutorial. Today we're breaking down the Karakuri staff. I gotta say this weapon is probably the staple of the game. I'm sure the devs really love this weapon since it really embodies the whole building and different combo aspect of the game. It's a really unique weapon, not something that a Capcom Monster Hunter game has ever seen, let alone other games as well. So in this video, we'll break down the mechanics of the weapon, the basic attacks, talk about different combos, the Karakuri combinations, and how to effectively use this weapon. So without further ado, let's jump on in. Starting with the mechanics of the staff, like most weapons, your goal is to fill up a gauge at the bottom left to unleash a powerful attack. The difference is this weapon doesn't fill up the gauge based on the number of hits or damage that you do to the monster. It levels up based on the number of Karakuri mutation attacks that you land. Now this is a unique feature to this weapon. By clicking F, R2 or RT, you can mutate between four different forms. From the original staff, to the twin fangs, to a giant shuriken, to a polar arm, and then back to the staff. Now you can mutate as many times as you like between these forms by clicking the mutation button. But if you want to fill up gauge, you must perform the mutation just after a few hits when your character glows for a brief second. Upon clicking the mutation button, you will do an attack which you must land. If you don't land that attack, you will not gain gauge energy. So this is actually really important to note because if you mutate and then get hit without landing the mutation hit, you will not gain energy. The opposite side is also true that you don't need to land the first few hits before you mutate. You can actually do your combo you'll start to glow and then you can mutate. As long as you hit that mutation attack, you will still gain energy. So just keep that in mind that you just need enough time to make sure that you'll be able to hit that mutation attack in order to gain that gauge energy. Now the glow is a very short window. It's a very temporary switch period. If you see your character glow after a hit, you must mutate immediately. If you dodge or roll or attack again, that glow disappears and so does your chance to mutate and gain gauge energy. Lucky enough, it only takes between 1 to 3 hits to glow, so even if you miss one, it's totally okay. Now, as you mutate and add more energy to your gauge, your damage does go up after certain levels. This includes the first level for going from no energy to blue, then after 4 levels you go from blue gauge to green gauge which adds more damage, and then finally at max gauge you go from green to orange, reaching max damage. Now this energy gauge also doesn't deplete over time like a few other weapons. However, you also cannot stay in a single weapon mode for longer than 35 seconds. Now this time period can be lengthened depending on the skills that you have on your weapon itself. But either way, when you start to see your gauge glow red in the bottom left corner, that indicates to you that you have 10 seconds to get a mutation attack in, otherwise you're going to reset the entire energy gauge. And yes, you actually have to land an attack. You cannot just simply mutate. If you mutate within this time, you will gain energy or you'll maintain your max energy. If you miss or you fail, however, you lose all of your gauge energy and you restart. Alright, finally, the last step of this weapon mechanic is the final ultimate attack. At any point, if you click the mutate button and the secondary attack button at the same time, you will perform the ultimate attack no matter what your gauge energy is. What ends up happening is that your Karakuri staff transform into a giant greatsword like weapon. And I mean like giant giant. Now of course while you can transform into this ultimate attack at any time, the attack does differ based on your energy level. If you have no gauge energy, the attack deals a single hit, moderate amount of damage, absolutely not worth because it's got a very long animation, just definitely not worth the damage. If you have blue energy, it deals a single hit but higher damage attack. At green energy, it deals two hits, both at higher damage. And then finally at orange when you're max, you perform a 3 hit combo with the final hit dealing massive damage. Now this third hit will always be more than the first two combined, so it's definitely worth and makes the first two in the combo not entirely worth to use. The downside of this attack though is sort of like, it's like a finisher move. Once you start, the attack consumes all of your whole energy gauge, you cannot cancel during the first two hits, you can roll to cancel the third, but again if you cancel the third, there's no gaining back your energy. It's already been consumed and you'll have to basically just reset. You do have directional control with this three step attack. If you hit the directional buttons while doing this attack, your attack will sway towards that direction. It won't do a full 180, but it'll kind of like sway to the sides. So it gives you a little bit of directional control here. 
So overall, you gotta make sure that you use this attack only when you have a big enough window for the three hit attack. Or at the least, aim it so that, you know, you miss the first two, but you hit that last one. It's the most crucial one that you have to make sure you land. When you are just learning this weapon or fighting a monster that you're not good at, it might be better to execute this attack when you have the blue or green gauge, just so you're doing the one or two hits and not the three, and then you end up missing or messing up or getting hit. Once you get a better grip with the weapon and you're more comfortable with the monster and you learn their openings, you can go ahead and go for the two or three for the ultimate attack. Now the alternative is to also combine this with a Karakuri like the Crate, and if you use this ultimate while mid-aerial attack, you'll pull out the Greatsword and deal a single high damage hit, only using half the energy gauge. So this is another tool in your arsenal if you can't find an opening for the whole 3 hit combo. Just keep in mind that you have to be doing the aerial attack, you have to be mid attack and then hit the mutation plus the secondary attack button to transform and draw out your juggernaut blade. So now that we've broken down the mechanics of the staff, let's talk about the basic attacks and the efficient methods to level up your gauge. There are 4 mutation forms available for this weapon, each with their own normal attack combo and then a secondary attack. Primary attacks will have different combos depending on their mutation stage, while secondary attacks have no combos, they are all single click attacks. Now to clarify what I mean by mutation stage, when you mutate your weapon, the mutation attacks that follows is always a primary attack. When you mutate continuously, you actually go through an 8 mutation cycle, cycling through all 4 weapons twice. Now that's very coincidental that the energy gauge itself has 8 parts. So I'll go through here all 4 weapons, their regular primary attacks, their secondary attacks, and then I'll talk about their phase 2 primary changes. Now yes, some of these attacks you will never use, but I just think it's important that you guys are aware of them so that you understand the skills that you're using and the weapon itself. Let's start with the original staff. The primary attack is a 2 hit combo or like a 2 click combo. It does more damage if both attacks are hit compared to the secondary staff attack and it has a shorter animation. The secondary attack is a longer animation. It's a very dramatic pull vault jump and then a slam attack. So a long animation, not entirely an ideal attack to use mid combo, but this is a good opener to leveling up your weapon gauge. After a single hit, you can then mutate into the next form. So this is very helpful to get back into a fight. You can close the gap by jumping into the air, slamming down, then mutate instantly into the next form and gain some gauge energy. Next up, we have the Twin Fangs. Now this has a three step primary combo, so you can click anywhere between one to three times for the attack. You will need to complete all three in order to glow to mutate into the next weapon, but I will do a reminder here that you don't need all three hits to land on the monster in order to gain some energy. You only need the mutation attack. So even if you miss one of these three hits, just finish the combo, mutate and aim to land that mutation attack. The secondary attack yet again is good for like getting back into a fight. It doesn't deal as much damage but it is a quick multi-hit attack that does 5 hits. After the 5 hit animation you can definitely mutate into the next form. The third mutation is the shuriken. Now the shuriken has some really neat attacks. The primary is a single swipe attack going from like top left down to the bottom right across your body. It does 3 hits. It's a single click for the entire attack animation and the one swipe is enough for you to mutate. The secondary attack is actually very similar to the Wogasa Blade if you've ever used that in, in Wild Hearts. You throw out your shuriken for like 3 seconds like a boomerang and it does 7 hits and then comes back to you. So again, not very ideal when you're mutating through weapons. It does deal more damage than the primary though for sure. And it's better for sure if you want to like take a break to back off or heal. You can get right back into the action by doing the boomerang attack, sending your shuriken out, and then mutating into the next form. Speaking of, the final form is the pole arm. Now in my opinion, this is the weakest link of the weapon. It's kind of like the slowest animation, so it's going to slow you down quite a bit whenever you're doing your transformation, so I try to avoid this one. The primary is a single slam down attack. Again, a very dramatic, long, and unnecessary animation, but it lets you mutate after one hit. This one isn't as bad, phase 2 is much worse which we'll talk about in a moment. The secondary animation is a much cooler one, it's a 7 hit multi stab attack. Very similar length of uh, animation length as the primary, but it does way more damage. So just like other weapons, it's good to return to damage from a break, but not really good to use if you're just trying to mutate through and gain some gauge energy. 
So those are the phase one mutations for the four weapons. Let's talk about the phase two mutations and how the primary attacks change. So on the second cycle, the staff actually stays the same with the animation clicks. It's still a two click attack, like two primary attack click, but the animation changes that it does a second attack. So each click does two hits instead of one. After that, the order also changes for the cycle and you move from the staff to the shuriken instead of the twin fangs. The shuriken changes from a one click to a two click attack. You have to execute both hits in order to mutate. And it's kind of like the animation changes from just doing a swing from left to right. Now you're actually doing a swing from the bottom right to the top left. And then the second one does it back from left to right and then you mutate. After the shuriken comes the twin fangs. Now this changes from a 3 hit attack in phase 1 to a single attack in phase 2. Much cleaner, much less time consuming, way better. It's literally one single hit, one single animation and then you can mutate. Finally you arrive at the polearm again. Now the polearm mutation changes from a single hit to a 3 step hit. This is definitely the weakest link because of how slow it is. It is a huge input delay between clicking the attack button and the actual animation. Most likely monsters will move around or like attack you within this whole animation. So I don't really use this one. I try to stop at this point. I'll discuss this more in a moment. But generally speaking, keep in mind that this seventh spot or the seventh mutation is kind of the slowest and the weakest link. After the polearm, you reach the final stage in the mutation cycle, which is another shuriken actually. Only this time the primary attack changes from a three hit swing to a two hit jump and slash attack. It's a very dramatic attack. Not entirely worth getting to this point, but it looks pretty cool as well. The damage is not the highest, and you can only retain this as long as you don't stow away your weapon. Afterwards, the cycle resets. Now I've mentioned this whole cycle in the off chance that you actually get a chance to perform the whole thing, but 99% of your hunts, you aren't going to get a chance to go through the whole combo, because it requires that you also don't stow away your weapon or get hit. This whole cycle is not even the most efficient way to gain energy combo, as I've mentioned before, the secondary attacks are really good ways to get back into fights, but Karakuri combinations are actually much more ideal for building gauge energy. Now I'll discuss this in the next section, but before that, I want to mention specific draw attacks that you can still use and it's still useful to build gauge energy quickly when you have small windows to attack. So each draw attack is very unique and it'll insert you into different parts of the mutation cycle. So knowing which ones are good or which attacks are better for certain monsters will help you take advantage of small openings to get gauge energy. So let's start with just, just a regular, regular draw attack of just running straight up and then hitting primary attack. This draws a special staff draw attack that you can use to mutate after one hit. Now this puts you at the very start of the eight mutation cycle. So nothing really different here other than drawing your weapon. This actually deals less damage if you were to do the two hits with the primary staff, but it is much quicker. Next up, if you're running forward and sprinting and then click the secondary attack button while sheath, you pull out your shuriken immediately. Now this is the first stage shuriken and it does the boomerang attack right away. This inserts you at like stage three or like mutation three of the cycle so that you can mutate right into the pull arm, which is the single hit attack. The other good benefit of using this draw attack is that you actually skip that slow 3 hit claw attack which is usually present in mutation 2. So you can skip the 2 hits from mutation 1, you can skip the 3 hit claw attack from mutation 2, and you go straight into the shuriken which does some high damage and then mutate into the polearm which is a single hit attack which you can then mutate again out of. Basically it lets you gain 2 levels of energy really quickly. Another alternative when your weapon is sheathed, you can just do a regular moving forward plus secondary attack, so no sprinting. This launches you into a unique polearm attack which is a single hit attack and then you can do mutation 4 which moves you into the second phase of the cycle and lets you get some 2 to 3 quick mutations before you get to that long 3 step polearm mutation. This one is okay, it's not a favorite of mine by any means since the polearm draw animation is also long but it is an option for decent damage. Now contrasting that last one, my favorite is actually sliding into any monster and clicking any attack button. This will launch you into a single hit twin fang attack and then you mutate into the third stage shuriken. So this again here is your chance to skip that three step slow twin fang attack at stage two and you go right into stage three. And from there you can do pretty much three really quick mutations from the shuriken 
to the pole arm, and then back to the staff. So depending on the monster that you hunt, what openings you can capitalize on, and the opportunities you have, a combination of these different draw attacks can help you reach max gauge really quickly. From these attacks, myself, I really like to use the slide opener and the shuriken opener. The slide one is very useful for being able to reposition to dodge a monster and then like go straight into the slide attack and then you transform into the shuriken which you can then transition into the pole arm and the staff really quickly. So that's like two to three levels straight of like energy gauges. The shuriken as well is also really nice for good damage. Oftentimes the shuriken will cause like a small part break so a little bit of a stagger on the monster and you can fit in two to three quick mutation animations before the monster gets back on their feet. So these are the normal attacks to gain gauge energy, but the most efficient methods to building energy is actually the use of the Karakuri. This is why I mentioned that this is probably the most staple weapon of Wild Hearts. All Karakuri animations give you an immediate 2 gauge energy levels, so they are great for building energy whenever you can fit them in in a hunt. So I'll start this section off with the most efficient method, the Celestial Anchor. Now you can jump glide to a monster from any point and perform a vertical spin attack by clicking any attack button. This is a very quick attack and once you land on the ground, your character glows and you can mutate into a special, much faster boomerang shuriken attack. Now this attack also has range and that's what makes it the most efficient method to build energy. You don't even need to land the spin attack, you can do that beside the monster, dodge the monster on the side, and then throw your shuriken out to gain some energy. Once you also level up the Celestial Anchor, you can use it 3-4 to four times to max out your energy gauge. So it's definitely one of the best basic Karakuri skills to combo with to gain gauge energy. Damage wise, it's also basically tied for the highest damage when combining with Karakuri, depending on the angle that you hit the monster. If you're too close to the ground, you won't get a lot of vertical spin hits, so your damage will be a little bit lower. But if you have some height and manage to get some good number of spin hits in, this combo will deal significant amounts of damage. Moving on here, there are other combinations that you can use with the Karakuri. Simply jumping off a crate will launch you into a vertical pile driver attack. Once you land on the ground, again you can mutate and that'll send you into a super speed spinning claw dance. Now this mutation does grant two levels as well and the best part about this weapon is that the size of the crate doesn't affect gauge level compared to other weapons. So it's very quick to use, doesn't matter if you're jumping off a 1 stack or a 3 stack crate, just use it, jump, and then you can gain some energy really quickly. It does require a little bit of bigger of an opening because you see this spin here, that can't be stopped. You don't really want to be just jumping into an attack as well, you want to make sure that you're jumping after dodging an attack so that there's a long enough cooldown for the monster that you can get the spins off. The next Karakuri combination is the Fire Karakuri and this is a really nice one. When you set a fire lamp, your weapon takes fire and you instantly go into the boomerang shuriken. Once the shuriken starts to make its way back, you can actually activate the mutation early before you catch it and then you go into a staff spin and final smash. This is really great for extra damage, especially monsters that are weak to fire. It can be combined with a harpoon or a chain trap to fill up your gauge really quickly. Putting down two or three fire lamps instantly and then just like barraging the monster, you will fill up your gauge in no time. So these are the three Karakuris that I recommend. The other ones like the Glider Karakuri performs very similarly to the Celestial Anchor. With the Glider you can input any attack while you're in the air and then you do the same vertical spin and boomerang shuriken. You might get a little more damage because you have more height with the Glider, but in my opinion it's not really worth because with the Celestial you can get to your ultimate Juggernaut Blade much faster and get more damage. Similarly, the spring is also very useful at getting close to a monster and it sends you into a claw spinning attack. When you mutate however, the cha you change into a pole arm and attack in the opposite direction of whatever directional key you're pointing at. Yes, it's weird, I don't know why it's designed like this but basically if you push forward W key, you basically attack backwards and vice versa and the same applies left and right. It's kind of stupid, I don't know, I don't know why it's like this honestly, it's just, it kind of makes it as a pain. This is okay for bigger monsters if you can basically hit in any direction, but if you're fighting smaller monsters you may end up flying over them or you might misdirect the mutation attack and then you'll just completely miss. So it's not really that great. I'd recommend again just using Celestial Anchor to get back into a fight rather than the spring. So that's it about gauge energy guys. The last things I'll mention for the Karakuri. Do your best to save your traps for actually doing your Juggernaut Blade ultimate attack. The harpoon trap or the chain trap 
These are both very ideal for locking down the monster early to execute some big damages. Do keep in mind this won't work entirely later on as like the monster will gain some sort of uh, immunity to these. So they'll break out of the traps much faster. So later in a hunt, you can use these traps to actually gain some gauge energy and then time your juggernaut blade instead. And that is the breakdown of the Karakuri staff. I hope this helps you guys out. As usual, if you have any comments or questions, drop them below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video and share it out if it helped you. Happy hunting, friends. And until next time, stay safe, be happy, and keep hunting. Sky Sensei is out.